digital immigrants. The digital immigrants are those who learned to enter in the world of information technology after they have become grown-ups. I, intro I introduced myself, and this is what I want you to know, that if you want to be anything, you need to introduce yourself, not to be introduced. You need to lead yourself, not to be led. I took my first computer course in 1962. None of you here was born at that time. And that was in a little village outside London called High Wycombe. Anybody who knows that region would know High Wycombe. And High Wycombe was the base for Microsoft, uh, sorry, for IBM at that time. And we were talking at that time about computers, they were called word processors, they were not computers. And this word processor was about the length of this stage. And uh, I was in a, in a little so-called hotel of 70 rooms with one bathroom and we had to wake up early, as early as possible to be able to, to take a ticket to, to go to the bathroom. But it was an excellent experience in how to know about the future world, the world of information. And what happened is the world has moved from information to knowledge. Now we are not in an information age anyway, we are in the knowledge age. Knowledge is using information to create knowledge. That's the knowledge age. Like creating all those wonderful tools that are a result of the information technology as the infrastructure, as the plumbing. In the knowledge age, which we have entered, we are now seeing a new world and evolving. I am reading a book and I encourage you to read something on that called Singularity. Singularity claims that in the year 2050, man and machine will become one. We will be talking to machines more than we talk to each other. Machines will be talking to each other more than they talk to us. And our entire intellectual capability will be in transplanted in the machine, so the machine will think exactly as I think, and my brain will be trained to react and act like a machine, which means enhancing our faculties, whether it is memory or speed of thinking, etc. And that's tomorrow, 2050 is, is not a, a year far away. And it will not dream when we talk about this. This is not dream. In a few years, you will be driving your car, and next to you will be a car without a driver. You will have to get used to that. You will be on the street, and you look on, on, this, on your side, and you will see a car, but there is no driver. It is self-driven driven because of the immense development in artificial intelligence. And I had the honor of being with Bill Gates on one of, uh, at one of the conferences in, on, the panel, on the panel with him. And I asked him, what do you describe this century as in one word or two words? He said, artificial intelligence. This century is about the development in artificial intelligence. Everything is going to be more intelligent. And we will have to accept that. Don't, don't waste your time deba debating whether it's, that is good or bad. Because it's like debating whether they should be, there should be night and day. It's, it's a luxury which, uh, which is useless. So you have to realize that this is where we're heading. So where does it take us? It takes us to a world where knowledge can become destructive. Or takes us, as Bill Gates hopes, to the wisdom age, where we will use age, where we will use knowledge wisely 
for the benefit of humanity. It's one of two things. One young man, like any of you, can invent something which can destroy the whole world in one act. And this is not something that is, is difficult, as you can see now. The creation and the, the, the development in technology is moving so fast and exponentially fast that uh, anything is, is to be expected. So either one day we'll have a great invention that will destroy humanity or something that will protect humanity and that will make this world a wiser and a better world. That's now now here, here comes your role. So you can, you can decide what you want to do. When I was 10 years old, I decided what I want to do. Vaguely. Then finally, I got to it. And I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste your time. But I invite you to visit my website. It's easy. It's Talal Abu Azali, which means tag, T-A-G, at tagu.com. Talal Abu Azali at Talal Abu Azali International.com. We have our own internet line, our dedicated, and we are our own ISP. We don't go through service providers. We are the largest company, as I said, in many fields in this, in this whole world. But all of that is because as early as 62, I realized the immense power, the enabling power of information technology. Don't waste your time thinking about anything else. Every morning you wake up, instead of calling your girlfriend or your boyfriend, say information technology. <laughs> it's nice. Fall in love with information technology. Information technology is a great lover for women and men. You enjoy it. I know you will not, you think it's completely stupid of me to say that because a, a, a happy Valentine is much nicer than saying happy information technology. But it's okay, I, I, for whatever it's worth, I tell you happy information technology is better than happy Valentine. It's, it makes, it is more useful, it can be more productive, and it will take you places. Happy Valentine, although I had to say to my wife, after 50 years of marriage, I have to tell her, Happy Valentine. <laughs> and believe it or not, I brought her one red rose also. I took her a rose, a red, uh, a red rose, and she liked it. Well, at least she claimed she liked it. I, think she, I don't think she liked it, but anyway, she made me feel she liked it. Um, but believe me, information technology is the buzzword. Nothing else. Whatever you want to do. You want to be a politician? You want to be a lawyer? A scientist? A lawyer or a liar? Both ways. And uh, you know, I have a very good friend. Are there any Indians here? Okay. I have a... I have, a, I have a very great friend, he used to be the, a very important uh, political figure, and he was a lawyer. So he went to give a speech in, in Delhi, and when he was introduced by the young man who introduced this, fortunately I am not a lawyer, so he didn't make the same introduction. He said, uh, His Excellency is a great politician, but he is by profession a liar. <laughs> And you know, in India, they pronounce the word lawyer like liar. So, so he said, he's a, he's a, he's a liar. <laughs> and and uh, uh, anyway, it, 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 it's, uh, it, it's something that you have to realize that uh, if you want to do anything and succeed in anything, there is only one enabler, information technology. Don't think of anything else. Nothing can get you there. No matter what it is, if you want to be a movie star, you need to be, or if you want to be a, a queen, you, you, you need to be 
<laughs> information technology is what will get you there. I will. I want to leave you with these words, but I want before that to say that uh, I enjoy talking to to young men and women like you are, and I do that all the time. Knowing that after I finish my speech, they wouldn't remember 1% of what I said. But I still do it. I still do it for my own personal satisfaction. Because I had the luck and privilege of listening to a wise man when I was as young as you are, who said something, and it stuck into my mind. And because it's stuck there, I think I owe, I owe to that wisdom my career. It was a simple statement that, uh, that made, me, made me think of everything I do in the light of that. And that was in the prehistoric era when there was no internet and no information technology. That, he was a schoolmaster and he used to tell us every morning, ma hufida qar wa ma kutiba.